Hey friends, welcome to the chicken coop. Today I'd like to share with you how you can build a do-it-yourself automatic chicken coop door inexpensively and easily. An automatic chicken door is super convenient because it lets you visit the coop on your schedule rather than theirs. And the chickens enjoy being able to get outside first thing in the morning and have the door automatically close and secure them in the coop at night when they roost. This is a super simple project and I think I constructed it for well under $100. Now of course you can purchase a pre-made automatic chicken coop door for $150 or $200 but this is something you can build easily for a lot less money. I'll show you how I did it. Here's the chicken coop door. It's a simple sliding mechanism. I'd simply cut a hole in the building that's chicken sized and around that hole I framed in some pieces of wood that made a slot that this door can ride up and down in. Real simple. And the door just hangs here by its own weight like so. The slot is not tight at all. There's a fair amount of slop in here where the door can move around and that's so if the chickens kick some debris into the doorway it won't jam up the operation of the door. Now at the very bottom of the door you'll see that we added some boards which have a little bit of a wedge shape to them. So as the door comes to its final close it gets pushed up against the, the slot it rides in so it keeps the door nice and tight and it doesn't vibrate and flop around. But during most of its travel it's got a fair amount of wiggle room. The door is just simply a board and we have a connection on it to a turnbuckle which allows fine adjustment as to its actual closing position. So the cable goes from the door up to a pulley that's attached to the ceiling and across. And that cable then goes over to a linear actuator. Now this actuator, when powered up, will either extend or retract the cable. The actuator needs to have enough throw to completely open the door. So my door is about 16 inches in height and the actuator needs to have 16 or so inches of throw to it. Uh, you could use larger or smaller depending upon the size of your chicken door. So you need to purchase an actuator that has enough throw to cover the span of the door operation that you want to do. The actuator doesn't need to be super strong. I mean it's only lifting about five pounds a door at most. So it doesn't have to be a very big unit and it's not going to draw a whole lot of power. This actuator runs on 12 volts DC and it's set up so that when you apply voltage to it in one direction, you put plus voltage on the red terminal and negative goes to uh, the black terminal, it will move in one direction. And the actuator has limit switches built into it. Uh, so make sure you get an actuator that does have limit switches in it, which is pretty typical. So when it reaches the full length of travel in either direction, it will automatically stop and just park there. Now if you swap the polarity, so you put negative energy onto the red wire and positive energy onto the black wire, for example, then the actuator will move in the opposite direction. So in one polarity it goes out and closes the door. The other polarity it pulls towards itself and opens up the door. And so it's a pretty simple situation mechanically. And uh, let's take a look at the electronics that drive this system. Here are the timers and the battery that runs the system. That actuator runs off of 12 volt power, so I have a small rechargeable 12 volt battery. You could use any reasonable size 12 volt battery. You could use an old car battery, tractor battery, 12 volt power supply. Might be a good idea to put a trickle charger on the battery, uh, either a solar charger or um, 110 volt power trickle charger to keep the battery in good shape. Although the actuator doesn't really draw a whole lot of power and it's only doing it for a minute or so 
in the morning and in the evening. So it's not drawing a huge drain out of this battery. The battery should last for a very long time. I have two timers here with a couple of relays set up. And in my s system, I've got it set so that the first timer controls the time that the door opens in the morning. And the second timer controls the time that the door closes in the evening. And that goes through these relays, which provide the appropriate switching and signals to drive the actuator. You could build this system using only a single timer. And so I'll go into the whiteboard here and sketch out how you wire all this stuff up. It's really quite simple. And uh, it works great. So this timer has my door set so that currently at 6 a.m. every morning, it opens the door for the girls. And then this one, closes the door a little after 10 p.m. each night after the sun has gone down and everybody has returned back to the coop. You could do this project a little bit more simply using only one timer if you wanted to save a little bit of money. Uh, the actuator, the timers, these relays, even the battery are all available on places like Amazon inexpensively. So let's go inside and I'll get to the whiteboard and I'll show you how you can wire all this stuff up. The actuator will have two wires coming out of it and if you put power in in one direction it will move outward and it will automatically stop when it hits its limits and just park. And then if we swap the polarity around the actuator will move the other direction and when it comes to its full range of motion, it will again stop on its own limit switches and just park. And so we need to adjust the length of this cable to make sure that the door fully closes when the actuator is completely extended and fully opens when the actuator is pulled all the way in. And mechanically, that's all we need to do. The door isn't very heavy, and so we don't need a very heavy-duty actuator. Just a small one will do, and that's relatively inexpensive. So the next step is, how do we electrically set up the power to run that actuator? Well, I'm going to throw, show you three methods that you can use, from simple to still pretty simple to, well, still pretty simple. It's uh, not very complicated. The first method is we could have complete manual control using a switch like this, which is a double pole, double throw switch. And on the back side of the switch you'll see that there are six contacts. Like so. And the switch is set up so that when you flip it in one direction, these center contacts will make connection with these terminals. And if you flip it the other direction, that will get broken. And those center contacts will then connect up to the top terminals, like so. Now, in order to run that actuator, we need a 12 volt power supply. And that could be a 12 volt power supply, or it could be a battery, or maybe it's a battery with a trickle charger attached to it to keep the battery in good condition. So let's say we have a battery and it's got plus and minus coming out of it. And the battery, like I say, you might want to put a charger on it just to keep the battery in good condition. But this system is not going to draw very much power. It only runs for a minute in the morning and a minute at night. And even during those times, it doesn't draw a whole lot of power because it's not a very big actuator. So it's not going to be very stressful for your battery. I would expect any medium-sized battery to last a long, long time. And so let's take the power from this battery and apply it to these contacts right up here on the switch. Like so. So we have 12 volts across these two. And if we were to flip the switch, 
up there and make connection here and we were to apply the actuator off of these two terminals the actuator would move and then if we were to connect these terminals to these terminals and we cross connect them so this one comes down to here and this one will come down to here like so now when we flip the switch up in this direction we connect plus and minus to our actuator but if we switch it down here they get reversed minus plus like so and the actuator goes the opposite direction so you could do this whole thing with just a double pull double throw switch like this where in one position the actuator goes outward and the door goes down the other position the actuator gets pulled inward the door goes up simple as that but that's not quite as convenient as having it run automatically on a certain time so in order to do that we need a timer and I'm using some inexpensive timers picked up off of Amazon that are very popular and I'm not going to go deep into the timer programming because you can find all that information and you might choose to use a different timer. The timers that I chose have a single contact. They're just a switch that turns on and off. And they have pretty flexible programming. They can have something like a dozen or 15 events that happen on all different days. But for my purposes, I'm only using one single event which is the door open or close time and that event happens every day so I'm just using one event on the timer in its programming and it's real simple and the timers that I chose also run off of 12 volts so the simplest approach would be to use a single timer we have our battery and a relay which does the function of that switch that I just talked about for reversing the polarity that goes to the actuator. And the relay is the same thing as that switch, except it's electronically controlled. So we have the contacts just like the switch had, but then we have a pair of additional contacts which uh, go to a little coil inside the relay that mechanically actuates the switch. So it's just like the double pole, double throw switch that we just looked at, except that instead of you mechanically flipping the switch, we've got a little pair of contacts here that energizes the mechanics in it that does that operation for you. And so all we need to do is just like on the switch, we cross these apart and these lines go out to our actuator. like so and we apply power from the battery just like we did to the switch like that just so nobody gets confused those aren't connected okay and so it's the exact same thing that we just saw with the switch. And then we put a timer, which is a switch, right here, to this guy off of our plus. like so and then this goes back to negative terminal so what happens is normally power is applied to the actuator which operates it to its extent and then it parks and perhaps this is set up so that it um, pulls the door closed and then the timer actuates at a certain time of day. This closes 
applies power, switches this over, and the actuator pulls back and opens the door. And the timer has a single program in it that at a certain time it's going to go click and close that switch, actuate the door, and then in that same program it's got an off time. And so when it goes off, Power is dropped here, and then the actuator gets its voltages reversed and it operates back and uh, operates the door. So you have a single program in the timer with an on time and an off time, and those are the times when the door opens or closes, uh, depending upon which polarity you've got set on your actuator up here. So to do this, all you need is a battery, maybe a charger to keep the battery in good condition or a power supply, a timer unit, and a double pole, double throw, 12 volt relay, wired like so. Now if there's a downside to this setup, it's that you always have power going out to the actuator, which is okay because the actuator will go to its limits and its internal switch will turn it off and it'll just sit there and not consume any power. But there's always power available on these leads going out there. Okay. I opted for a little bit more complicated setup where I have two timers. Where I have a timer that when it switches on, it sends the door into an open state. And a second timer, when it switches, it pulls the door to a closed state. And in each of the programs on those timers, I just have it go for about a five minute interval. So when I want to open the door, it's set for a certain time, and then five minutes later that timer interval stops, which is plenty of time to allow the actuator to go through its cycle. And then there's no power going out to the actuator until sometime later when the second timer kicks in to drive the door the opposite direction. And again, the second timer just has one single event programmed in it. That is the door close time. And so I have that event set for a particular time, and then about five minutes later, I have that event end. So um, I'll scratch out that circuit diagram. That requires two timers and two relays. So here's how you can set up the wiring if you want to use two timers and two relays the way that I did. So you have a timer for the uptime and a separate timer for the downtime. This is your input power, which is coming from your battery, which is plus and minus. Minus goes to ground. And so each of the places where you see these ground indicators, they all just tie right back to the negative side of the battery. They're just common. And so we have plus power coming in, which goes to the up timer. The up timer is wired to a relay in this cross configuration like we had done previously. And it just simply applies power to the relay, which um, gets connected out to the motor to drive the motor into the up position. If you want to go down, the down timer kicks in, which operates the coil in that relay to swap the polarity to drive the motor backwards or drive them over forward actually, and to close the door downward. And then we also need to provide power for that. So we use a second relay, which gets actuated from the down timer going through its coil. And that closes the connection right here, which applies power through these contacts back up into the top relay, which drives the motor. So this way we can have a separate timer for up operation and down operation. And these timers only actuate for about five minutes, which gives plenty of time for the door motor to go through its cycle. And after that five minutes, they both turn off and there's no power being applied to the motor during the idle periods. So this should be a little bit more conservative on your battery because you don't have long periods of time where you're holding a relay down. So this is the way you could use two timers and two relays to um, make it a little bit more sane to program because 
you just have to worry about the time on one relay versus another rather than the times within a particular event. Not a big deal either way. It's, uh, this one will cost you the cost of an extra timer and an extra relay. But in any of these situations, any one of these three ways of wiring it up, as you can see, it's very straightforward and very simple and um, very convenient. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that um, you can give your chickens lots of outdoor playtime. And uh, with a device like this, you don't have to be out there at the crack of dawn or after dark to operate the chicken door for them. I find it to be super convenient and it turned out really well for me. So if you pursue it, I hope it turns out really well for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. If you like this kind of content and you find it entertaining or useful, I'd appreciate it if you take a moment and subscribe. That helps the channel grow. If you choose to subscribe, and haven't already, of course, I'd also advise that you click the bell icon for notifications on YouTube so that you're notified when new videos drop. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to seeing you again in another upcoming episode.